that they know about, but guess what? It still has flaws in it. Wow. And you can see the flaws. It, it still has flaws in it. It's got like it. Now, when a diamond, like when a diamond, that's as beautiful as that diamond is, and it belongs to somebody. It must belong to some really rich person. It sure don't belong to me, you know. But when that diamond was, you know what came from a piece. Of, you know what that diamond came from? A piece of coal. That's crazy. With a lot of pressure being put on it over a long time. Now, from what little bit I know about it, that's what I've, I've been told. That's where diamonds come from. They come from a lump of coal. Stuff that we burn in the fireplace. Crazy. But yet, over a period of time, they get a lot of pressure put on it, and it forms into a diamond. And then, when wh whoever goes to these diamond mines, and I've never been to one, they find what they're looking for, and they pick it up, and they cut it. They cut the diamond like that. And this guy that I looked up, I looked up a story about this one. And like I said just now, it's supposed to be the most valuable diamond in the world. $26 million. A good piece of change. Now, it's got, but here's the thing. It's not perfect. It's the most perfect. It's the most perfect diamond. But it's not perfect because under, if, when they put it under a magnifying glass, and look at it, it's still got blemishes. This diamond still has scratches on it. It's, it's got uh, even a fingerprint. So even though it's the most perfect one there is, it's not perfect. And you know, what's that got to do with anything? Well, neither is any of us, are we? We might be good people. We might even be religious people. There might have been some point in your life where you went to church all the time, anything like that. <laughs> Try to, to be good to other people. Guess what? You've got that flaw. All of us do. Not just you, me too. It's called God. It's called sin. <laughs> and if we look at ourselves close enough, what, what did Paul say in, in, in 2 Corinthians? He said, examine yourselves. Remember I talked about that magnifying glass? Hey, how you doing? I talked about that microscope, basically. Look, they're looking at that diamond and, and making it bigger so they can look and see what it really looked like. 2 Corinthians 13.5 says, Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. What's that mean? Well, it means just what it says. We're to examine ourselves. If we look, up, if we look at ourselves, we'll, we'll know there's flaws there. There's faults there. Why? Well, we're different than our father Adam and our mother Eve was, aren't we? Because of what? Because of sin. He said the day, he said, he gave, God gives us a choice. He gives us all choices every day. He said in his word, he, and it goes back to, it all goes back to this right here. His word. Should we disobeyed God. And all of us have. Why am I sitting here, why am I standing here getting older by the second right now? And dying. As we speak. Why am I standing here getting older by the second and dying as I speak? For the same reason you are sitting there and getting older by the second and dying while I speak because of sin. Why do things start breaking down? Why, is my, why, why do things start breaking down on us? Why do more of those flaws start becoming more and more evident? Remember the diamond? And they looked at that on a mic, microphone, a back of my, microscope to look at but hey you don't have to look very far to see my flaws how about you I don't have to look at myself under a microscope to see flaws and guess what I know something else you're just like me because we're all the same why for all the sin that comes short of the glory of God what's that mean yeah. means we're in trouble <coughs> means we're in trouble I have a little message talk about some things that perfect records and thank you for being here to give me just a few minutes of your time. We talked about a perfect diamond. Let me just a couple minutes to talk about perfect, some perfect records. Major League Baseball, any baseball fans in here? I'm a baseball fan. No, I, I knew Bobby was going to be one. I, 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 when I, live, I live in California. I used to go to a couple. Uh, I went to the, see the San Francisco 49ers play a couple of times. They're at the Candlestick Park. And, and, and we I, just went to Columbia not that long. And we went to Columbia to see a game. But the Major League Baseball says here, I, I looked it up, began in 1875. That was a few years ago. 
As of July 4th, there had been 200,000 games played. With 270 no-hitter games pitched. What's a no-hitter? That means that, that other team didn't even get a hit. That pitcher, that pitcher pitch, pitched what? What they call a perfect game. Because that, that, uh, those people that were standing up there at bat did not hit that ball one time. <laughs> it's a no-hitter. It took 139 years to reach that number of no-hitters. That's a very rare accomplishment. In 1972, the Miami Dolphins had a perfect season. That's another coincidence. I lived down there during that time. I was in the military. My dad was, so we lived in different places. I, I was down there living in Florida during that time. And I remember rooting for the Miami Dolphins. They did not lose one football game during that season. 1972. Had a perfect season. 17 wins, no losses. Very rare accomplishment. There's a basketball team called the Indiana, Indiana Hoosiers. Some of you might have watched some basketball. They went undefeated in 1976, and that's a rare accomplishment. Yeah. Everybody ever play golf in here? I never. I've been to the putt putt course. But I've seen, I've heard this thing about called hole in the one. You've seen that guy, that little hole way down there somewhere. That, oh, way down there. He takes that thing, that club, little ball in that piece of wood, whatever it is, and takes it. Boom! And guess what? He hits that ball, he hits that ball, and it goes right in the hole. It's called a hole in one. That's supposed to be a perfect, perfect accomplishment. We, we talked about the diamond. In 2013, this 10 karat di di perfect diamond sold for $26.7 million. Any, any money fans in here? I, I like money. Yeah. A 10 karat perfect diamond sold for $26.7 million. Million. That's supposed to be the world's most perfect diamond. But guess what? Like I said a couple minutes ago, they found flaws in the diamond. They looked at it real good, and guess what? There was imperfections in it. There was imperfections in it. Now, I'm going to look at myself for a minute. As that lump of coal who came to God and trusted Him by faith to forgive me of my sins. He took a lump of coal. He took something that just could, it was worth nothing to be born in the fireplace. And he made something out of me. And not because of me, he did it. Because I came to him by faith. But guess what? You look at me close enough. God took this lump of coal. And he forms a new man. But guess what? If you look close enough, what you're going to see? going to see flaws. Why? Because of sin. Because of sin. Because of sin. You know, we talked about like the no-hitters pitch and the rare thing. Let's say there'll be more no-hitters pitch more than likely. Somebody else will pitch more no-hitters. Uh, there'll be perfect seasons. Somebody will hit. Somebody, if they, uh, if, if, if they play golf and God lets us stay around, lets them stay around here long enough, there'll be more holes in one. Very rare shots. There'll be more holes than one. But there's only one rare accomplishment that can never, ever, ever, ever be repeated. And that's when God became flesh. Dwelt among men. Knew no sin. There was no sin found in him. He wasn't like all of us. He can be looked at under the strongest microscope, so to speak, that mankind can devise. And guess what? There are no flaws in the Lord Jesus Christ. None. Amen. None. None. Wait a minute. I'm in trouble though. God tells me. He was, he, he, was, he was perfect. We're commanded by God to be perfect. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Look at what 1 Peter chapter 1 says. Be ye holy. Or I'm holy. Uh-oh. What am I going to do? Be, his whole, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be like God is. Have mercy. I'm, I'm in a heap of trouble. He's completely without sin. Um, excuse me, but I can't say that about myself. Can you? What's, what is it? Any, doing anything that God told us not to do. We know what it is. We know when we're doing something wrong. God's giving everybody. Un unbelief. Unbelief. Sin of unbelief. Thank you, man.
He commands us to be holy. Be perfect as He is perfect. Absolutely impossible. Now, I went to church. I go to church usually three times a week. And because I, I like doing it. I like going. I don't like this. I like going to my church down the street here. Now, is that going to make me holy and perfect in the sight of a holy and perfect God because I go to church? No. Why? Why not? Because I'm trying to do something to make myself justified. I'm trying to make this lump of coal turn out to look like this by what I do to it. Instead of what he does, what he's done for me. We're not holy. Isaiah chapter 59 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. <coughs> Excuse me. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. He will hear you if you call on him. Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities, all of our, your iniquities, have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Well, you say, I'm like, everybody's a child of God. Well, where does that say that in here? We're, we're not born of children of God. We're born of our father, the devil. That's what, that's what Jesus Christ said. He said, you're, you have your father, the devil. When we're born in sin, guess who our spiritual father is? It's not God. He's our creator. But he's not our father. In order for somebody, in order to have him as my father, in order for you to have him as your father, you have to be born into his family. That's why you must be born again. What's that mean? You must be born again. He's given us a way to be holy. He's given us a way to be perfect by becoming flesh himself <coughs> and living without sin. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for me. What's that mean? He knew no sin. He, he was a perfect, he was a true perfect flawless diamond who knew no sin. And because he knew no sin, I can't explain how all this happened. Just, just like I can't explain how that lump of coal down there somehow, but you, coal becomes a diamond. I, 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 don't, I can't explain it. I believe that it does. I, I, I can't explain it. And I can't explain exactly why or how he changed my life when I repented of my sins and trusted that that's my Savior. Now, we as people don't like pressure. And that pressure put on that lump of coal and get back to that and became a dime. Listen, anybody here like a lot of pressure being put on them? I, no. no. But I tell you what, when the Holy Spirit of God comes and speaks to your heart and illuminates your mind and lets you know the truth of His Word, that's pressure. You can either run from the pressure, you can ignore the pressure, but guess what? You can't hide from it. We've all heard it. You can run, but you can't hide. You can't hide from the Holy God. Who's got to do the changing? He does. So how are we made holy just like God is holy? He said, be holy as I'm holy. Through the offering that He gave of Jesus Christ once and for all. Every priest, listen. Every priest, priest, in Hebrews chapter 10 says, every priest stands daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices. So these Old Testament priests, they would offer sacrifices in the temple. They were looking forward to, they were looking, what they were doing was exercising faith in what was, come, was to come, but I'm not going to get into They would offer these sacrifices in the Old Testament for different things. They'd stand daily and offer sacrifices. Those sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, who? Jesus Christ. See, they were looking forward to him coming. They were having faith in what was to come. But this man, the Lord Jesus Christ, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of the Father. He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might have the righteousness of God in him. And you can ignore it. We can ignore it. You can run from it. You can talk about how much foolishness it is. Guess what? The Word of God talks about it. Everybody, everybody in here, if there's a hell, everybody in here want to go to it? If there's a hell, everybody want to go? I do. Heaven. Heaven. Yeah, I'd love to go. And you know, what, you know what the Word of God says? Hey, I'm not here to try to make you a Catholic or a Baptist or a Buddhist or a Muslim or anything else. I'm not here to make you anything because only he can make, make anybody over. Only he can make us over. But guess what? Religion won't do anything any good. 
Jesus himself said in John 3, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believes not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. If you're unsaved, if you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, you know if you're walking around here, every breath you take, every time you blink your eyes, the wrath of the Holy God is abiding over you. And the wages of sin is what? Death. And what the Bible describes as literal hell. We talked about that heaven a minute ago. Well, that, this thing that talks about heaven also talks about a literal hell. Now, do you have to believe it? No. Guess what? He that believeth not shall not see God. Religion, religious, being good, doing good works. That lump of coal could not do anything to itself to make itself into a diamond. Pressure over a long time was being put on that carbon. Somehow transformed into a diamond. And we, when you know him, he'll change your life. He'll change your life. That's what being born again means. We've been born the way that we are. The way that we are, that we've been born, the shape that we're in, the way that we are right now, the, the illnesses that we have, the conditions that we're facing, are because we've been born that way. We were born in sin. He said, hey, didn't I tell you you shouldn't eat of that fruit? I told you that the day that you shall eat that fruit, and the day thereof, you shall what? Surely what? Die. Now, Adam didn't fall over die that day, but he died spiritually. All of us, without Him, are dead in sin. Without being born again. Without coming to Jesus Christ by faith. Seeing ourselves for what we are. We're that lump of coal. No, none of us are born that diamond. None of us should look like that. We look like that lump of coal. Which is useful for what? To be thrown into the fire and burn. You've got to come to Him by faith. How do you do it? Call upon Him. See yourself as God does. God commended Himself, His love toward us, and what? And that while we were what? Yet sinners, Christ died for us. I'm not, I'm not here to advertise for my church or take up an offering. I'm here to share what He's given me and millions and untold billions of others just by coming to Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about being a Baptist, a Catholic, a Buddhist, a Methodist, or somebody that worships a, a, a skateboard. I, it, no. I'm talking about coming to Him by faith. That's all. Why? Well, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, I've showed this. You, I've show, I'm sure I've showed this before. But I'm going to do it again. <laughs> no, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to show the chair. There we go. I know all about Jesus Christ. I know all about that Bible stuff. I know all about being. <laughs> I know everything about it. Yeah, you know what? I know everything. I, I know about chairs. I, I, I know this chair will hold me up if I sit down in it. I know it would. Guess what? I know that it would up here. But if I never exercise faith in the chair, guess what? I'm just going to keep getting tired. There's a difference between knowing about what I'm talking about and knowing Him and exercising faith in Him by sitting down on the chair. Come to me. He said, come to me all your labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoga upon you and learn of me. His burden is light. I got trouble in my life. You better believe it. As long as we're in this place, we have trouble. Period. I got a wife that don't listen to me half the time. For one thing, there she is right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 uh, I just want to share with you folks. I'm sorry about that, baby. I'm just, I, I just want to share this with you folks. Right, what do you have to do? Come to it. Come to me, all that labor heavy laden. Hey, if you don't have any, if you don't see yourself to have labor, if you don't see any need, if you don't see any reason, if you don't see any need, come to me, all you that what? Labor and are heavy laden. If you haven't laid that burden on you, that burden, like that piece of coal, he's turning turned that diamond. I don't need him, you say. Hey, fine. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And there's no escape. There's no escape. I'm 62. Anybody in here older than me? I'm 67. I'm 
I shouldn't have said anybody in here. No. Guess what? <laughs> uh, guess what? Unless, bar him calling his church up today or sometime before I, I'm going to end up in a box. I'm going to end up in a box. Maybe he'll put on a better set of clothes on me than I had here that would be made up. You know how they do and they lay you out there. But that's not where my soul is going to be. What you're seeing is a shell of Roger. And the soul that sins it shall die. And we've all sinned. Come to him by faith. How? How do I do it? Call him. Call him. That's too simple. That's how it